Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Calling All Mutants, Getting Started with Mutation Testing. My name is Jordan Levin, and I'm a developer at Sparkbox. During this first part of a two-part series, I'm going to go over what mutation testing is and how it can fit into your overall testing strategy. So what's the case for mutation tests? Well, instead of describing what it is right now, let's quickly go over the type of problem that it solves. Let's say that I want to check that my refrigerator is cold enough. To do that, I'll test that the temperature is 40 degrees. So I grab my thermometer and I see what the temperature is. Currently, it, it's sitting at 40 degrees. But how do I know that I'm testing enough? What if my test with the thermometer isn't comprehensive enough of a check? So I decide to leave the refrigerator door open for an hour with the expectation that if I do, my thermometer should read a temperature above 40 degrees. But after an hour, it still reads 40 degrees. This means I need to change my testing strategy. By checking that my thermometer wasn't giving me a false positive in a passing test, I've conducted a type of mutation test. It demonstrated that my initial testing strategy wasn't comprehensive enough since my test didn't fail when it should. So how does this apply to code? Well, let's get started by creating a function that returns the difference of two integers x and y. I create the file getDifference.js that contains a simple function by the same name. And because we want to make sure it does what it's supposed to do, we test it. We write unit tests that assert expectations against our code. And since this is such a simple function, I have 100% code coverage, which is the traditional litmus test for checking the adequacy of our tests. But lurking beneath the surface of this simple test is a liability, because the coverage doesn't tell you how effective your assertions are. Just like my test with the refrigerator, the way I'm testing my code could lead to passing tests even after introducing breaking changes. In some cases, I can fundamentally change the logic of my code and still get a passing test. This is especially important because it means that during a bug fix or a refactor, it's possible that changes made to your code base will break your application, but your test suite will still be reporting passing tests. As an example, if I change the arithmetic to be the sum of two numbers instead of the difference, my test still passes. Although the test is making assertions against my code, it's not doing it effectively with the test data set. So if we write tests to check our code, who tests the tests? How can we be sure that we have a quality test suite that doesn't only make assertions, but makes the right assertions? This is where mutation tests come in. Mutation tests work by introducing logic-changing alterations to your code, called mutations, and checking if your existing test suite detects these changes by failing your tests. These mutations can be arithmetic-based, like swapping out addition for subtraction, logic-based, like swapping out conditions for returning true or false, or even returning undefined values. When mutation testing starts, a mutation is introduced and the test suite is run. If at least one test for a given function fails, that's good. That means that your test suite is making effective assertions against your code. When the logic of your code changes, your test suite detects that by failing a test. But if all the tests for a given function passes, even after mutations are introduced into your source code, that means that your tests are vulnerable. So how does the mutation process work? Well, before we get far into it, your source code is safe. These mutations aren't being applied to your actual source code. Instead, they're being applied to a number of different temporary sandboxes with one mutation being applied to any given function at a single time. If you're thinking to yourself, one mutation before running a test suite sounds computationally expensive, you're not wrong, but there's a reason it's done this way. Here, I have my function of get value that returns y minus x plus x. In this function, we're simply returning back the unaltered value of y since negative x plus x cancels itself out. In a mutation test, a single mutation is applied to any given function at once. Here, for example, you can see that it's changed the function to y plus x plus x, which changes the logic of our code. Now let's go ahead and reset it back to what it was. Now instead of applying a single mutation, Let's apply two. Instead of y minus x plus x, we're now calculating y plus x minus x, which carries the same logic as the original unmutated function. In both instances, x is canceled out. Even though we've applied mutations to our code, we haven't actually changed the logic of it. This is why mutations are applied one at a time, because by applying a single style of mutation to any given function, we can be sure that we are, in some way, altering the logic of it. And if the tests still pass after doing this, it means that your test suite are not making adequate assertions against your code. 
And this idea of making adequate assertions is important and illuminates why code coverage by itself isn't enough. Now, don't get me wrong. Code coverage is great. It tells us what code has run during the course of a unit test. It measures distance. It tells you how far across your code base your tests have reached while running. But that distance is very superficial. Although it shows you what code has run during the course of your test, it doesn't tell you if it's been thoroughly tested. Mutation testing, on the other hand, checks depth and goes deeper than coverage to check that your tests are not only making assertions against your code, but making effective assertions that will detect logic alterations by failing. Thanks for tuning into this brief intro to mutation testing. Be sure to tune into the second part of this video series where we go over how to add Striker, a popular mutation testing framework for JavaScript, to your project.